Hello guys, my name is Rasola, and in the past couple weeks I've been releasing a bunch of guides on creation tools that I personally use. I've covered things from OBS to Radeon Relive to Bandicam to Shadowplay and OBS again. And today we're going to talk about Fraps. Yes, Fraps. And you can see Fraps is very tiny. Ignore this notepad. This notepad is here because my registration details are underneath it and this is just a half-assed way to cover that up. So Fraps, as you can see, is very tiny and it doesn't really get updated very much. It's a very simple application and you cannot really scale it very much. It's got a couple of basic settings here. You can start it minimized, so not open like this. You could keep it always on top, which would allow it to go over this notepad if I drag it over. Run it when Windows starts, minimize the system tray only. You can see what build you're currently on that you've installed. You can see the last version on their website. This is the last version and it's literally from 2013. So this doesn't see a lot of support, but I still get some use out of it. So I thought I'd show you guys how to use it. Fraps does come with a handy little help button right here that will bring you to their website, thankfully on your default browser, if you want to get information that way. This tab right here, the FPS, this is where that iconic Fraps FPS counter comes from and where you can set it. You can set some hotkeys for enabling and disabling the overlay as well as benchmarking. And you can choose whether to show FPS frame times and averages as well. And you can stop the benchmark after a period of time, which makes it useful beyond recording as well. You can customize where that overlay goes and choose it to only update once a second rather than being more real time. You could choose where to save benchmarks, movies. This is where your actual video files come into play. F9 is the standard hotkey to enable capture. You could choose capture settings. 30 FPS, 60 are the ones I usually recommend. 50 is pretty decent as well. I'm actually kind of happy they have that there and not a bunch of other ones that might be confusing. It does default a custom one of 29.97. If you have a use case that makes you want to use that, then and go ahead and use that. However, that's mostly for old broadcasts. I really wouldn't recommend using this, especially if you're going to be editing, because that can literally triple your render times compared to using 30 FPS when working with digital video format. So you can also capture a full size recording. So 1080p is the size of my monitor. It would capture in 1080p or a half size recording, which is gonna be closer to 720p. I believe the half is like 540p or something. And so it was catching that instead. You could tell Fraps to split the recording every four gigabytes. And this will be a reliable amount of time because Fraps only captures in a lossless format. So you will hit that four gigabytes very quickly. That's one thing about Fraps is it only captures in a lossless format. However, if you need a lossless recording, then that's actually a really, really useful use case for still using Fraps in 2024. And I still use it. I even though I purchased it like 20 years ago or something. You can record the desktop audio. There's a specific setting for that. There's stereo, multi-channel. It allows you to record an external input such as a microphone. You can also set a hotkey for that microphone. You could hide your mouse cursor if you want. You could lock the frame rate when recording if you want. And then other than that, we have that very Bandicam, I think Relive had this too, support where you can screenshot as well, but just like Bandicam, it allows you to pick exactly what format you want it to come out in. You can include the frame rate overlay in screenshots and you can even have it repeat capture until you press the hot key again, which is right here if you so choose. There's all the default folders that you can change and that's Fraps, that's how it works. It's very simple. You might want to compare it to the other products that I've shown. This is the fourth and final thing that I use for recording. I no longer use Shadowplay because I don't use NVIDIA GPUs anymore. I have entirely AMDs in my arsenal, I should say. I use this a little bit more than I use the actual AMD Relive though. It is very useful in use cases where you just need to pump out lossless video for whatever reason. Very high quality video regardless of the space that it takes up. There's not really any options of how these recordings turn out though. You get the lossless that it provides in the format that it provides it. With its age, it only records in AVI files in case you were wondering, but that's it. 
That's all I have to teach you about this program that I still use occasionally to this day when I need it. I like to have a nice arsenal of tools available to me and hopefully this has helped one of you. So for now, thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know if you want to know about anything else related to Fraps or any other software I've spoken about or about a different software in the comments below. And I hope I'll see you guys on another one.